Hey peeps, it's Dems. I know I've been kinda absent lately, so it's time for an update. The calendar system is taking a lot more work than I anticipated, so I figure I can work on something smaller. Stay until the end of the video where I give a more thorough channel update. Alright, let's get into it. This. You see this? They don't move. They are completely static. <laughs> This looks pretty bland and bad, if I'm being honest. As I mentioned before in previous devlogs, the whole overworld system is based around a tutorial I followed on how to make a Pokemon game. Just like in older Pokemon games, like the ones on the DS and back, the overworld system of that particular tutorial works on a grid for both the player and the NPC movements. But since I don't have the grid system set up in my game, I'll have to go about it in a different way. So. If I want to implement NPC movement, I'll have to look for another tutorial. I found this one that's more Legend of Zelda inspired. I looked at the code and started implementing it, adapting it to work with my game. I noticed the tutorial was using Rigibody 2D, which is a Unity component that automatically takes care of basic collisions and physics. However, since my game is actually 3D, even if it looks 2D from the top-down perspective, I tried switching to a 3D Rigibody. This works just fine until... Oh, um, you okay, Eri? I remember there's a way for me to clamp rotation axis and all that stuff, but I thought that using Rigid Body was a bit overkill for my kind of game anyway. So I gave it some thought and remember the player wasn't using the Rigid Body component, but rather the character controller component. This component does just what you expect it to do. It controls a character. And it's simple enough that I could easily work with it without worrying about anything else. I mean, it works fine for the player object, which is way more complex than Eris dumb AI here, so... I made the necessary changes to the NPC object, and now the character controller is working. But if you have been paying attention, you'll notice that the sprite is completely static. That doesn't look good now, does it? I tried implementing some code so Eri would look towards where she's walking. I could swear I've made some animations for her, but apparently I just made the idle sprites. So it was time for some pixel art. Here you can see I make heavy use of using other sprites as a base, copying, pasting, rotating, and flipping pixels around. You know what they say? Work smarter, not harder. After the sprites were done, I loaded them up into Unity and assigned them to the Airy prefab. Now she's displaying the proper animations. After a bit of testing, I found out there was a follow-up tutorial by the same guy who went a bit more in depth and fixed some of the quirks for this particular approach. I decided to follow along and made tweaks whatever they were needed. I love the way the AI behaves now. Somehow, it looks more natural. However, you'll notice that Eri can still walk away whenever you talk to her, and that's not good. So I decided to spend some more time trying to fix this. I remember the whole game has this state machine that controls whether the game is in a cutscene, or if it's displaying dialogue, or if the player is able to roam around. I figured that maybe I could make the NPCs follow these states, so they would only move when the game state is free roam, and stop moving when the game is displaying dialogue. However, I quickly came to the realization that this will probably affect all of the NPCs. So to test my theory, I added some Eri clones and also gave them the ability to walk around. And my theory was correct. I figured that each NPC didn't have to know when the dialogue was opened. They just had to have their can move variable change to false whenever they were interacted with. However, I didn't have any way to check when the dialogue was finished from the actual NPC until I remember the game manager objects works with events. What's an event, you might be asking? Well, essentially it's a way to send a notification of sorts to some other objects so they behave a certain way when the event occurs. All I had to do was to make the NPC object subscribe to the onclose dialog event and that way the NPCs can move variable will change to true whenever the dialog was finished. This way, every NPC will know they can move when the dialog finishes. Not the most performant or safe way by any means, but it will do for now. Lastly, I wanted to have both stationary NPCs and NPCs that could move around. I figured this would be easy to implement. I'll just add a boolean variable called is stationary and have the NPCs check if they can move or not based on this variable. And that's it. Now, this system is still a work in progress. I bet there there's tons of features I could add in the future. I should probably also check for more bugs and refactor some code here and there, but 
that's gonna have to wait for now. Because, well, I think it's time for the channel update part of the video. Oh, you are still here. Yeah, you get to see my beautiful face once in a while. You're welcome. So, as I said before, the calendar system is not ready and honestly, I don't think it's gonna be ready for a while. I think I gotta learn a ton more about programming to make a calendar system that is fairly competent and it's not full of bugs. Of course, I could always make new assets and, you know, record that process and make a devlog out of that, but I feel like I already did that because all the assets I gotta do now are just 3D models and sprites and I don't wanna do, you know, that kind of repetitive video over and over again. You guys are already seeing that. So I thought that I'm just gonna focus on something simpler for this vlog and give you guys some context on what's going on. This past couple of months I've been making a lot more progress on the game than I'd ever done before, seriously. I think a demo is possible for the next year unless something really bad happens like the end of the world or something like that but for that I gotta be at my 100% and right now between work general difficulties developing the game and me just being really tired from overexertion I am not at my 100% and that's fine I'm just human and humans get tired and need some rest from time to time I've already requested some time off at work, so I've been spending my days relaxing, playing video games, focusing on myself and getting back to my 100%. So regarding the game's development, I'll be taking the entirety of September and October off and I'll be back for November. Remember that this is a solo project, so I have to take care of every aspect of the game, which leaves me very tired, so I need the rest. That being said, I didn't want to leave you guys with just a short devlog and disappear, so I did something a little different this time. I'm posting a video essay alongside this devlog. It's nothing like you have seen on the channel yet, uh, but I hope it's interesting. It's kind of related to Synthetic Girlfriend, kind of, but it's nothing like you have seen on this channel yet, uh, and I had a ton of fun making it, so... I know it's not the type of content you subscribe for probably, but I would still like to know whether you like it or not. I'm not really taking the channel in this direction by any means, but I've always wanted to make a video essay on a video game I really liked and I figured I could take this opportunity to do so. And it was really refreshing creatively speaking. Alright, I think that's all I have to say. Um, I'll see you at the end of November, and thank you for being understanding and for your continuous support. Alright, until next time, adios.